What is up, everybody? This is Correct Me If I'm Wrong. I'm here with good old Patrick and Jesus. Now, what's up with y'all today? Y'all doing good? Oh, you know, same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. Dude, that's getting really old. <laughs> that's getting really old. Uh, the, the other day, I was with my buddy. He's a, he's a teacher over at Big Spring. And uh, he was telling me he's getting this new uh, interactive TV. It's kind of like a smart board. You know what a smart board is? Mm-hmm. Smart boy is like the hook the projector. It's kind of like a fount, uh, fancy, fancy mouse, right? Like you can click on mm-hmm. it and do stuff like that. One of the teachers came in there and he was like, "Man, I don't want one of those. I don't want one of those in my room, man. Because eventually those TVs are gonna take our jobs." And I was like, "That's crazy." Because maybe eventually, I don't think it's gonna take teachers' jobs. But do you think eventually you could put somebody on that screen? another teacher on that screen and that's where they can go into what do y'all think do you think that's a possibility in the future i do feel like that eventually they can come up with something that can minimize the amount um uh, of of having you know teachers actually physically there and you can maximize the amount of students they'd have because then you can have people um like students uh skype in basically mm-hmm. to yeah. a certain degree um so it definitely could we just started something in uh, where we work yeah and they call her it's like a almost like a google assistant and we can ask it questions and it helps us with what we do every single day so it's pretty crazy it, it like narrows the gap between mm-hmm. us and needing a manager because mm-hmm. at this point we can ask hey what is the answer to this and this and this and it it narrows it down for us so we're we're kind of getting into that realm too where we have something that essentially breaks the gap i think it's a uh... Like it'll be, it's a tool essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think you can take. I don't think you could ever replace a teacher. There's more to a teacher than just, I guess, teaching. It's like mm-hmm. the relationships you have with your teachers, stuff like that. But I can definitely see it being, if it's kind of honed in, like a really great tool for teachers to, you know, use as an advantage. Yeah. Not I, having to, you know, do as much as they have to now. And yeah, and I saw what it was called. It's called like a Promethean. They have like great apps like it's not supposed to replace mm-hmm. the teaching but it's supposed to be like a resource like a tool and i don't think they were going to replace their teachers too i think that's what it is is used for a tool used for a resource but it's just kind of like you were saying that you can ask that person a question right but it's mm-hmm. not it's not a, is it a recording or is it like a person just from it's a skype did that's what you're saying no no it's like a tool that we use it's like a you literally just type in a question like on your keyboard Mm-hmm. and hit send and then it comes back with the response so it's kind of like a like when you chat with someone online the customer service is literally just like that yeah mm-hmm. yep oh but but on the other side it's not a person it's like just a computer yeah it's, it's like an it's ai it's, it's like a AI. computer generated mm-hmm. answer but it helps us narrow a lot of things down rather than having to go find someone for an answer mm-hmm. that can narrow down us to the right answer and it's pretty much almost instant it takes you know five ten seconds maybe mm-hmm. you, to come up with the do answer. you feel like that's better for you instead of going to a manager or going to i feel like it's a hundred percent better because it narrows like i said you um you can probably knock out 70 percent of your questions with this so instead of having to go mm-hmm. hunt them down uh now it's right there ready to go plus on their side you're narrowing down what taking time away from whatever you're doing as a manager to having to answer, you know, these these small little questions. Yeah. And now, granted, when things kind of get technical, we still do mm-hmm. need to collab with each other, which is great just like, you know, being a teacher is the exact same thing. Like, you're getting these these this equipment and this technology to help um, narrow down having to consistently gather mm-hmm. together and okay. come up with solutions and being able to concentrate that on specifically, you know, teaching kids. Yeah. And I think that's like cool, cool for you, but I think it would be a lot different for like younger, like from kindergarten all the way up to high school, because they're. It's not like y'all, because y'all can y'all know what the questions y'all know what the questions y'all need to ask that person when I was a kid. Like, I don't know. I feel like you need that human interaction. Mm-hmm. You need that human interaction with uh with a teacher. So I think if you're just looking at somebody on the board, you can't connect with that per- like uh, on the TV. You can't connect with that person kind of like, like a, a one way. Yeah, like one means. way because it's like if you're you're in a room full. I remember my teacher. Uh, what was it? Who, who my good teachers? Uh, you remember Mr. Yaguchi? I you do know? remember um, science teacher. Yeah, science teacher. He was really cool. I think it would be he he was funny. There was funny interactions in the class. You don't get that really when you're um, just hearing it from a 
a TV or from a smart board. You don't get that. So I think I think that's very different. I think that's why there needs to be a person in the classroom. There needs to be a teacher in the classroom. I had a college professor that I worked for when I was in college, and he was building his new um, curriculum for an online business class, yeah. right? And since it was online, he wanted to do something out of the box rather than having you just kind of just read and mostly just read because, you know, that's all online classes are. He was creating actual animated characters of teachers, like just random teachers that he made, and he was building a lessons plan. So you would actually sit there and watch this animated teacher sit in a classroom. There were other students animated. It was basically like you're watching a cartoon, but it was teaching you a lesson, right? So... Granted, you, you really can't really ever replace the one-on-one human interaction, but I do think like if technology rises, yeah. you could possibly go that way to keep, you know, kindergarten, especially like a kindergartner's attention and have like an animated dog or, you know, an animated weird character teach yeah. these lessons subliminally rather than that one-on-one conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah, but don't you think that just be different? Like starting from whenever you're younger, the only thing that's going to, the only person that you learn from is from a like... TV, you can't really, you know, I don't know. I feel like it will cause like s- awkward social situations. They get get older. I don't. Do, do you know what I mean? Not know how to associate with people because you're just oh, just in a classroom, just that person. I, don't, I don't like just yeah. I don't, I don't know how to explain it really. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I mean, I I, just, I would feel like someone still would have to be in the classroom, but I mean, the majority of it could be taught. You know, mm-hmm. eventually, if they do that, you know, that way the way uh, Patrick was saying, which is pretty cool. I think, too, like, if you were, okay, so going basing off of that, if you were able to create, like, an assistant that essentially was able to kind of talk back and forth with you, Mm -hmm. maybe that's narrowing the gap of, you know, being able to create that socialism, being able to talk back and forth, Mm -hmm. even though it's too inanimated, you know, character. You think, think like, like, uh, what was I going to say? Do you remember that time we were in college and we had to do that assignment that was ridiculously hard, uh, like, it was really 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 hard and you went to go talk every assignment in college ever well like you remember the one <laughs> nah, that took us forever yeah the about. one that took us forever like we went to like ihop we were just there to like on like three or four a.m we still didn't get it right like it was making me very ang- it was making us <laughs> angry and it got to the point uh you you went to go talk to the teacher and it's like hey you know like we worked on this forever is there any way you can like help me out and it's like oh sure yeah you know i know sure you, you, she she knew who you were from classes. It wasn't like from a blank screen. She knew you were from class. She knew how to empathize with you. So that's another thing. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that technology is going to slowly take away. Is you're right, you won't be able to create feeling inside of an assistant. They follow you know an exact uh, um, algorithm to be able to come up with that solution. That's is going to be the hardest thing to to override. Because you're right, like. Go and being able to go to the teacher and be like, hey, this thing was impossible. And then she raised our grade. <laughs> and Devin wasn't there for that conversation, so he didn't get his grade raised, which was funny. <laughs> I remember I asked you, like, wait, how? I, I, we did the same work. I got like a 75, and you got like an 85. How did that happen? And you're like, buddy, like, I'm just that good. Like, you know, I'm just that good. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I saw this the other day? Do you think kids should have laptops in the classroom? Like, to replace textbooks and to replace, you know, pencils. Like, you basically take away all of the hard supplies and you have a laptop. Do you think that's an advantage or disadvantage for teaching? I think that is an advantage, especially now, you know, everything, you're eventually going to have to use a desktop computer, you know, and, you know, using a certain software, you're going to have to write reports. So why not start that now? Because now at this age, when you get into it, junior high and high school, you're going to have to learn how to research for a paper. You're going to have to look up certain words that you don't know. And that's an advantage for everyone who, who comes from a different uh, situation. You know, mm-hmm. you have those people who uh, can afford a laptop, but you have those people who do not have a laptop. So you're basically getting a free laptop, you know? so I guess if there was a way to kind of limit um, uh, like what you can use the laptop for, mm-hmm. essentially... Because right now there is, like, at work we can't get on, like, certain websites, stuff like that. And that would be kind of cool if they find out a way to limit that while you're in class. Yeah. While you're in class, whatever, let's say, for instance, Wi-Fi you're connected to, you yeah. can't, you know, search that kind of stuff. So that would be cool to see. But I think it would be an advantage, um, which I feel like they're starting to do that, like, little by little now. It's it's to the point that, you know, everybody needs a phone. That's how you get your assignments mm-hmm. now. Even if you're in class, like an in-class, college class, you still need to kind of 
view your phone to know what assignments are next, stuff like that. So. Yeah. Over at the high school in our, in our old town, Big Spring, they're starting to use uh, Chromebooks. And a lot of people like them, especially people with technology. They like them because it's just a web browser. Yeah. So they're not going on any... Uh, well, they can get on sites, but it's just that's what it is. It's just basically basically where yeah. browser don't have to mess with anything else. But I remember back in high school, man, we had the MacBooks. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, so when, when we were uh, freshmen in high school, they gave everyone a MacBook, and so to play devil's advocate here, I remember being so excited for my shop class, right? And this was a first year laptop. So we spent like most of the class just messing around on a laptop mm-hmm. and like i hated that class i was so excited to be able to like do so much in this class and i guess because the laptops were new like the teacher was like okay let's just load up your laptops so we really mm-hmm. didn't do much in that class so that kind of sucked for me because like i didn't get to do it to me it felt like it hindered my learning even at that point in my life i was like man like these i it was one moment that i wish like the laptops weren't the thing because it just took so much away from that class and i felt like an actual interaction would have yeah, but I think it just depends on the class. Like, if you're going to be in automotive, you don't need a laptop right. every single day. But if you're, like, in math and English, yeah, you're going to need a Chromebook or a laptop probably almost every day. Uh, social studies and science, too, if you're figuring out, like, a for, like a, nah, formula. Yeah, formula. Formula, you need to look up back uh, some history, write a report. Like I was saying earlier, you're going to need those laptops. Mm, so yeah. I think it's, it is an advantage, especially for everybody. And then there's those studies that say, like, apparently your brain, I guess because of how we've evolved over the years, our brain remembers things better if they're written. If you write them, your brain literally remembers, like, kind of writing it down so you have more of a chance of remembering it later. That they say, when I was in college, I was actually looking up tips to help, you know, study. And that was one of the biggest things it said is that take, notes take notes on a pen, you know, with a pencil and paper. Because your brain will remember doing mm-hmm. that. Your brain doesn't really remember hitting a key. Like, it doesn't bounce the same way. So I wonder if, if that's going to hinder uh, people's ability to retain information. Or, on the other side, are we going to essentially start evolving where it is? Right. I've seen even with the new, let's say, for instance, the new, I don't even know if the older Samsung phones did this, the ones that come with the little stylus, you can write a note and it automatically puts it in a kind of note document. So it's kind of cool. It's like best of both worlds. You can write notes and then it kind of still goes in, into a note document where it actually, instead of handwritten, it's actually typed in, which is really neat. But that is crazy. Um, yeah, like when I was in school, I, I never, I, I hated online assignments because I don't know if my mind would go separate like I would get I would get distracted too fast and it, I just like that you know in class kind of situation where you can actually take notes write them listen to an actual person talking you know but yeah that I can see it's definitely changing it's it's not going to stay the same but it's very interesting to see what the um, outcome comes out of it so and now in college they're offering more online classes yeah yeah you can get so many degrees it's purely yeah completely online it's Don't even, insane yeah take a step in the school yeah and i just imagine like what's coming like if you would think like okay adding let's say like the vr goggles how they're becoming such a huge scene how now classrooms are getting them in i would think too like going back to like the auto- automation thing you could essentially have your laptop in vr and never yeah. actually touch a, a touch a vehicle uh, essentially being able to do that or going to the note taking thing what if you had like a stylus like an apple pencil and then a vr and essentially you were still writing but weren't writing yeah. like it'd be crazy it is crazy yeah. like where technology is going and what you know colleges are going to inherit in the next you know few years and yeah vr i feel like it is going to be a, a thing whether it's for school whether it's just in general vr is about to be like a, like a very big thing especially because of what what type of connection a lot of things are going to handle with like our like the new cellular 5g and stuff like that it's supposed to make it so much easier and faster but that's gonna be crazy. That would be, that would be crazy if, in the future, like that's how that that's how you see your teacher. That's your classroom. Like you just wake up every virtual, morning, yeah. put your virtual goggles on. It's like, oh, I'm in class mm-hmm. today, and and that's just the norm. That's yeah. just the norm for you every single day. And to me, we see it. We see it even today. Like you see what what do you see most Americans or most people in general do today? And they walk around with their AirPods in. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just becoming like a normal facet of life where people are walking around with the headphones. You know, in 20 years, that could be everybody walking around with, like, VR goggles. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> that's what we're doing. Like, it's funny to think about, but it is crazy to think, like, that's what people do now. Like, they have their they have their podcast or their music or their mm-hmm. or anything playing in their ear, and they tune the world out um, audio-wise. Yeah. It's not 
you know, impossible to think that in 20, mm-hmm. 30 years, you, you could have so many people walking around with, you know, glasses, like Google Glasses was trying to mm-hmm. become a thing. Walking around with these glasses that essentially tuning out the world visually wise. I think uh, like those glasses came too, like, yeah, like when they came out, they came out too fast. Like it was the wrong time for those to come out. I feel like if something was in the works right now, which it maybe is, and they came out, it just would have changed. Like the yeah, it was too early for those glasses for what, sure. What ever happened to the Google glasses? They just never. Yeah, they just never took off. They never took off. It was they were too expensive, I believe, mm-hmm. and they, they broke really easy, expensive. and just the connection problems with it. And like I said, it, everything's just getting better now. That could be like insane, like you know Tony Stark, the uh-huh. like, uh, VR yeah. on the glasses. Stuff and like I feel that. like in the next like two or three years, people are going to look so because we've had okay, so we've had smartphones like completely like you take over the industry. And then you had um, watches, smart watches that we talked about a little while ago, taking over the industry. And then you have headphones for the AirPods now taking over the industry. People, I think, in the next three, four, five years are going to want something brand new, again, to, like kind of revamp the industry. And like that, definitely, one hundred percent could be what essentially it's waiting for because i think you're right glasses came out too much i think in the prime of smartphones and people are like i don't need these glasses i have this thing right here that's doing amazing so as always stay fresh stay hungry stay driven and stay humble